Ich bin hier und es gibt nichts zu sagen. Dies ist ein komponierter Vortrag, denn ich mache ihn genau wie ich ein Musikstück mache. Es ist wie ein Glas Milch. Wir brauchen das Glas und wir brauchen die Milch. Unsere Poesie jetzt ist die Erkenntnis, dass wir nichts besitzen. Alles ist daher ein Vergnügen, da wir es nicht besitzen und deshalb seinen Verlust nicht fürchten müssen. Wir brauchen die Vergangenheit nicht zu zerstören. Sie ist fort. Was ich Poesie nenne, wird oft Inhalt genannt. Ich selbst habe es Form genannt. Es ist die Kontinuität eines Musikstücks. Most speeches are full of ideas. This one doesn't have to have any. Aber jeden Augenblick kann eine Idee daherkommen. Dann können wir uns darüber freuen. Struktur ohne Leben ist tot. Aber Leben ohne Struktur ist nicht wahrzunehmen. Nun sind wir am Ende des Teils über die Struktur. Wir stehen jetzt am Anfang des dritten Teils und dieser Teil ist nicht der Teil, der der Struktur gewidmet ist. Deutlich fangen wir an, nirgendwo hinzugelangen. Als ich letztes Jahr hier sprach, sprach ich kurz. Und zwar deshalb, weil ich über etwas sprach. Aber dieses Jahr spreche ich über nichts und werde natürlich noch lange Zeit weiterreden. Langsam, während der Vortrag weitergeht, langsam haben wir das Gefühl, wir gelangen Das ist ein Vergnügen, das andauern wird. Es ist nicht irritating, zu sein, wer man ist. Es ist nur irritating, zu denken, man wäre gern irgendwo anders. Here we are now, a little bit after the beginning of the 11th unit of the fourth large part of this talk. More and more we have the feeling that I am getting nowhere. Originally we were nowhere, and now again we are having the pleasure of being slowly nowhere. If anybody is sleeping, let him go to sleep. Das ist nun zu Ende. Das war es zu Ende. Nun ist dies zu Ende. position we choose the notion initially um, it sounded good but we didn't really um, you know um, define it clearly in the application we didn't have a long discussion about that we just felt it fits as you know you need these titles which so is taken it and then we we realized that actually in this initial gesture we felt we may have been touching upon quite a fundamental uh, thing and of course part of this idea of exposing practices research is that um, um, artistic practice becomes an articulation of a certain type. Um, practice to be something completely undefined in a sense that, that we, we don't know at what point something I do in my life relates to my art practice or not. It doesn't really matter. So um, having an as indeterminate perspective on doing as possible. But out of this uh, comes uh, one might say, um, certain, um, certain things. Um, for example, in a studio, you might leave a mark somewhere, or you might um, make a recording, or whatever it is. You know, they, they could be developed into, into what you might call um, works. Um, anyway, they only become works because there is something that uh, you may draw like this. Um, uh, the institution of art that actually 
operates a bit like a magnet, practice is exposed as art in an exhibition context. <laughs> so if I don't differentiate what practice means, those institutional formats matter to how, how practice will be recognized. If it's possible to expose practice as art, <laughs> it can also be possible to expose these elements as research or artistic research. Um, meaning that for these things here, can there be a different future, so to speak, that is not simply saying it's, it's art, it's art, it's art, but actually it does also do something else. <laughs> it's a different kind of object, so to speak. And the question would be, how can you present practice as artistic research? It, but I don't, I don't see that in, in, in this model, like the actual being or of an artist. Such artists have to take the risk of not being artists at that moment, because it's not yet defined what art might be. You know, you have to, you have to see yourself also as an artist, as another worker at that moment, um, in, in that kind of moment of institution for me, because otherwise it would already be captured by that institution of art, as the avant-garde has already been captured by the institution of art. Mm -hmm. At the moment to say, oh, this, this special thing of an artist, it should, it's not special. Um, uh, a lot of the things are actually um, very alien. I mean, you know, we don't know how to relate to those moving sounds in a human scale. And uh, maybe it's also simply an element of our, our kind of aesthetic world. cybernetic generation of data where we don't have meaning and this is why from my point of view also the concept of truth doesn't work anymore so there is no truth and no meaning in computer generated data sheets i'm not really sure if, it, if it's a if it's a helpful differentiation i mean we didn't care about this very much did we i mean for us Ultimately, um, uh, in a way, um, the computer that simulates something and creates this is as material. And also, if you look at the settings, I mean, um, those computers aren't off-the-shelf computers. I mean, the people work a lot to get the kit running <laughs> that does those calculations. I mean, it's, it's a very material practice of setting up a supercomputer somewhere. It's not just a receptive vessel of nature. The question is, what is the relation? What is the correlation? What is the nature of correlation? Artistic research seeks to entertain with scientific research. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but in that particular case, we're looking at um, the productivity of those apparatuses within science, through mm -hmm. transposition, as we described it. But I also looked at gardens, so it's not impossible to do that too. I want to share a space of creation 
mm. with gardeners as well as with scientists, because I, I think that's an interesting place to be. The German word Wahrheit, of mm -hmm. bewahren, to keep something safe, and the French vérité from verrouiller, that mm -hmm. you secure it, you make sure it won't budge anymore, that's not the same moment. I think it's a question of timing that actually well, qualifies the relationship that you have with the creativity in the sciences. And I think it seems to me that the whole talk about opening and communication not working and keeping things fluid is, is, to, is a kind of ethics of suspension of the moment of decision, what counts and what doesn't count, as potentially valued. That piece is interesting to me because when I explained this piece at the CERN, to the people at CERN, it was the only moment where they said, aha, now I understand what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> because what that is, it's yeah. the error they are calculating when looking at a uh, collision. So mm -hmm. they trace him back from their old detector data, they're tracing back this point, and they obviously have to calculate the error around this point. Right? And that's what I'm, we are looking there. When I said, well, we are trying to see um, how generative the error of your de detecting device is, that was immediately clear to them. Is that, are you happy with that? That for them, the, re the mental space, the representation <coughs> is the only access they have to artistic research? I think that was the only moment where they really understood that it was not about representing something. It's not about representing no. things. In my, it, we don't represent any collision there. We just represent their error, their problem. <laughs> but it's, problem but you just said it, but you did <laughs> represent their error. So it's still a representation or not a representation? That's my question because I'm interested in, in the access through representation, in the communication between the scientists and the artists. If I look at your sculpture, I meant not to fall into the trap of representation. I meant mm -hmm. not to know straight away, yeah. but I meant to know eventually, but potentially. Mm -hmm. But and something else, not. I mean, the, the point is, um, what is it you will know at this, at this moment? So to take the, the catalog as an example, um, the effect of the catalog is, um, on the one hand, for us, it became a workbook, so we can kind of look at this and work with it as we discuss the project. And the experience you have is not uncomparable to how we look at a spreadsheet or a database file where we see loads of repetitions of structures. Um, we don't know whether we should focus on this more than on this. Uh, it's repeating constantly. Um, loads of things are similar, self-similar. And you kind of try to work out how we're going to read this data set. How we're going to read this catalog. The danger of data is, you say, ah, it is what you said earlier. It is the space of error and so on. So all of the cotton, you have a justification, and that means you have a handle into that open space of unclarity. 
And there, I think artistic research is a very dangerous area because we are all afraid of doing art. And, and we should not use this research idea to, to have a security uh, uh, thing. I think it's always so dangerous, like when we are now sitting here, we are in the mode of understanding and talking and the performative part falls down. And then the next time there's a presentation performance, we all sit quiet and we feel you know, like we're in that other mode. Mm -hmm. And how can we kind of dive in between modes? Thank mm -hmm. you. 